So there's this topic that I realized that nobody wants to talk about, okay? Nobody wants to address this. Everybody's shying away from it. That we know wahala. Let me be the bad guy. Let me be the one to address it, okay? <laughs> and it is about this stereotype or this idea that is flying around that Igbo women, okay? There are a lot of Igbo women or Igbo women in general are very wicked, okay? Very wicked in general and are also very wicked to their house helps or their wards or their husbands, nephews and nieces. In fact, just to anybody that lives in their house that is not their children, Igbo women are very wicked to such people, okay? So in today's video, we're going to be discussing it, okay? Hi, my name is Adeze. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing good because I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> fantastic as you guys can see so in case any of you do not catch my name my name is actually Adeze which means that I am Igbo okay I am an Igbo girl I'm Igbo I am from Anambra state too. like Igbo 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 okay I'm an Igbo Igbo girl so just have that at the back of your mind while you listen to the rest of this video okay so on social media in recent times I have been seeing this talk I have been seeing this trend I have been seeing this stereotype about how Igbo women are very wicked you know actually as bosses as madams as people with house helps or guardians or people that have wards in their house they are generally very wicked to these people i've seen stories of women that starve their house helps starve you know their words or you know people that live with them generally so i'm not going to call, use house help as a general term but i don't mean just house help i mean like people that oh maybe oh your 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 husband's uh, niece or nephew comes to live with you you know those kind of situations so yeah anyway i've heard so many horror stories about how Igbo women beat them mercilessly suffer them don't give them food don't allow them you know interact with the children or play with the children don't allow them eat normal food you know give them give them leftovers give them food without meat give them you know very nonsense food give them sports food to eat I've heard so many horror stories, okay? When I say so many, I mean so many. If you go on Twitter, there was someone who did a thread one time because he talked about it and people came for him, but people now went to his DM and were giving their true life stories, okay? Telling them, telling him about things that happened to them personally. And there were a lot of stories. I wish I had, I had saved that thread, but I just skipped it at that, at that time because I wasn't in the mood to be consuming such. But there were a lot of horror stories about people that lived with Igbo women and you know what their aunties did to them what their aunties wife, uncles wives did to them what their madams did to them and all that and all that okay if you ask me now Adeze as an Igbo girl do you agree that Igbo women are actually very wicked in general okay in general are very wicked to their house helps to their wards and stuff like that do you really agree I will tell you yes emphatically yes I wholeheartedly agree okay now is that my story? Is that how I behave? Is that what, you know, I do emphatically no, okay? And I can boldly come out and say it to the general Igwe Madu, <laughs> the general public, simply because I know that it is true. I am not like that. I am not a wicked person. I don't like wickedness. I can't stand people who are wicked. I can't stand people who, who maltreat others. I don't tolerate it. I can't even maltreat anybody, okay? If I maltreat anybody, it is not intentional okay and i try not to okay anyway so that's not my story growing up was my mom a wicked person no my mom was not in fact i'm even better than my mom in terms of um drawing the line okay my mom was someone who was very liberal who she was strict though she was disciplined she was strict i told you how my mom we didn't have money my parents couldn't afford to buy christmas clothes for us her kids but because one of my cousins was living with us my mom did not want it to be like oh you could not buy clothes for this boy she took her money and went to buy clothes for my cousin but she did not buy for her own children okay so that's how selfless my mom is anyway my the point of everything i just said is that it's not like growing up i saw my mom being wicked to anybody in my house you know so i'm not saying that the reason why i'm not agreeing to that idea because i saw my mom do it no my mom did not do that okay my mom was actually very in fact that's one, in fact now that i'm looking back there are so many things my mom tolerated that i cannot like i know fits 
They told you somebody is possessed. You are saying, no, it's me that God wants to use to, to, to liberate this person. You left the person in your house. The person manifested. The person showed you pepper. You still left the person in your house until the person used her two legs to run away. Okay, like, I don't, I don't know how my mom did it. I, I, I can't. You know, as tolerant as I am, I know it, it's not good. It's, it can't be me. Like, just, it cannot be me. Anyway, so, that being said, I have seen so many real-life examples of women who are being wicked or evil women who are wicked to their helps. And I have a theory about why this is so. I'll get into that theory real soon, okay? But before I get into that theory, does it mean that women from other tribes are not wicked to their house helps? No, it does not mean that, okay? A lot of other people, a lot of women from other tribes are very wicked to their house selves. In fact, growing up, what we used to know about some Yoruba people, some Obiko, well, because I grew up in Lagos, what I used to know about them is that they don't even allow their house help eat from the same place that they eat from, okay? Their house help does not even sit down in the parlor, you sit on the staircase. Their house help does not even sleep inside the room, you sleep on the corridor. Okay, that's what we knew growing up, that's what I used to see from neighbors or from stories that I heard growing up, okay? So, Yoruba women are not exempt from this, Outside women are not exempt from this, Nigerian women are not exempt from this, okay? Women in general in the whole wide world are not exempt from this because I have seen so many stories that have happened outside of Nigeria, okay? There was even a story about somebody that, this one was even an American girl, oh. the girl is even an American that went to do a pair for one other woman in her the, no, like, no, the girl is not American. The woman was American, but the girl was from another country. And she practically killed this girl. She stabbed this girl to death. Okay, like, literally stabbed, set the girl up, stabbed the girl to death. Like, the girl literally stabbed till she died. Like, it was that bad, okay? So, nobody should come and tell me, oh, that is how Nigerian women are. Eh, eh, it's women all over the world, okay? Yes, it is more prominent in some areas. Oh, have you heard about how Middle Eastern treats their house helps? Okay, now, let's not even go there. Let, let's not, let's not, for Nigerians are even learning work where some Middle Easterns are, okay? So, let's not even, let's not even start going into, oh, it's only Igbo women, it's only Yoruba women, it's only Hausa women. It's it's only Nigerian women. It is a woman problem. Okay? Oh, men are not exempt. Though. There are some men that are actually like that. But why it is a woman problem is that most times it is the women who are directly involved in this house help or you know these words. It is the women who are mostly in charge of the home, you know, all over the world. So it is more dominant with women. It doesn't mean that they don't have men that are wicked as well. Okay. There was this story one night about there was this story that we saw about one woman that left her house help outside I locked her outside the house and i think around was it 11 p.m or 1 a.m people that were coming back from night vigil of or coming back from club saw the girl outside she was locked outside the house so when the husband they, they knocked and the husband came out he was like he has told the wife the wife is wicked that yes they should go and call police for the wife you know and all that okay so the what causes it most times is that women are or why it is more dominant with women is because women are usually the ones who interact with these people who you know deal with these people who are in charge of the home most times and a lot of men are focused more on working outside providing you know money for you know the family or in cases where the men actually have domestic staff as well or staff not domestic staff is is in cases where oh one boy like in especially in Ibo land a lot of men have their own boy that is the boys that um uh, what do they call it now uh, this internship they do this Igbo internship that is really really very successful that is the only way i'll say a lot of men interact with helps and quotes and it's not only help they are more like interns even though they do a lot too. they in fact they're basically like houseboys until they're now you know independent enough or until they now stay long enough for them to be independent they're basically like house or of shop boys let me put it that way Anyway, so all this to say, everything I'm say, I just said now is just to let you guys know that it is a human problem for people to oppress whoever they feel can be oppressed, okay? It is a human problem. The men oppress the women, the women oppress the, the children or the house helps or the, you know, the servants, okay? The men oppress the weak in society, the strong oppresses the weak in society. It is a human problem problem right but why does it sound as if it is more dominant with Igbo women in nigeria let me tell you guys my own theory about this okay my own theory about this is that Igbo women generally have been oppressed in a way in their society okay now i'm not saying that Igbo women are not allowed to work are not allowed to make money or are not allowed to do this a lot no i'm not talking about making money or you know i'm talking about in terms of our culture 
a lot of women or women generally are relegated to the background it is a cultural thing for women to be seen as subpar okay as not up to the men not allowed to partake in certain things not allowed to do certain things not allowed to talk in certain areas especially when men are involved you hear things like a woman is not allowed in such meeting a woman is not allowed to talk a woman is not allowed to inherit this a woman is not allowed to take that a woman is not allowed to eat this a woman is not allowed to eat or eat now it is less because you know of civilization of modernity of you know globalization of you know wokeness feminism and all of that it is not as bad as it used to be but trust me it is not women in Igbo land are not as free as you know their counterparts in other areas i don't know how other areas are to be honest but i feel like Igbo women are more oppressed in quote i'm going to still put in quotes because there's there's some nuances to it okay it's oppression but not really anyway it is a very nuanced case, but I'm not going into how oppressed they are, but I'm just saying that generally, looking at things, the men are seen as more superior to the women in Igbo land, right? So, my theory now is that because these women have been seen as less than, because they have been oppressed, because they don't really have that much say when it comes to their lives or the society in general, I feel like they now take out this, their frustrations on other people okay hurt people hurt people oppress people oppress people just believe me you okay hurt people hurt people oppress people oppress people angry people make other people angry <laughs> you know sick people make other people sick it is the truth so i feel like that is what contributes largely to why a lot of women in general are very wicked i know i always say this thing before that when people are talking about oh feminism or this or that i I'm, I'm not against feminism okay don't get me wrong i'm not against fighting for equality i'm not against you know fighting for women to have equal rights as men i'm not against it at all okay but where things now get murky for me where the things now no longer are clear for me is when women are being painted as this weak oppressed innocent you know damsel in distress that are just perpetually always being oppressed by men and these women can do no wrong that is one i don't understand that's one I, 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 I don't get that's one that doesn't make sense to me because i'm a woman who, hey i have interacted with women okay in fact the people who have dealt with me the most in this life are women and this is the same story with so many other women okay the people who have dealt with i'm talking about in day-to-day -day activities day-to-day -day interactions day-to-day -day, you know things even in the workplace a lot of time the people who have oppressed women the most are actually other women not even the men okay so i'm talking about generally I'm not, I'm not talking about when it comes to sexual crimes and stuff like that i'm talking about in general day-to-day -day interactions okay the person who is most likely going to insult you in the workplace is a fellow woman the person who is most likely going to insult you in the marketplace is a fellow woman the person who is most likely going to insult you and put a man first is a fellow woman the person who is most likely going to maltreat you or try to block the road for you or try to set leg for you or talk about you badly or you know gossip about you or you know just attack you in general it's most likely going to be a woman so that is where i have an issue with and i always say these things let us stop saying oh men are allowed to do this why why can't women be allowed to do that no the the standard for what should be tolerated in society is what is right what is good what does the bible say what is accepted by 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 god okay if not to bring god into it what is moral what in fact if morality you can't bring morality without having god okay what is good what is a good thing what 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 serves the good of the general public is what not just the general public serve what serves the good of a person is what we should emulate and what we should is what we should tolerate and what we should allow we should not say oh men are allowed to smoke in public why are women not allowed to smoke in public why should anybody be smoking in public why should anybody be smoking period okay men are allowed to to sleep with 100 women but if a woman sleeps with five men yeah she's called a slut why should a man be sleeping with 100 women why is that allowed why is that tolerated that's what should be no, no! 
No, people say, oh, when a man, when they catch a man cheating, they applaud him. No, 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 no. Who applauds him? I don't, I don't applaud him. I don't applaud, applaud a man for cheating. I don't applaud a man for being a man slut, okay, or for being you know, a man who. I don't applaud a man for doing that, okay. If a man comes out in public and is bragging about how many women he has slept with, I see him as a dirty, disgusting human being. I don't see him and be like, oh my god, that means he's 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 good in bed or he's he has this sexual prowess or whatever. No, I don't see. That. I see that this is a disgusting human. Being. So why should we not allow women now come out in public and be saying, "Oh, I slept with hundred men, and we should applaud her for that because men are allowed." No, okay. So I've already started going off topic. So at the end of the day, women are actually capable of inflicting as much harm, if not more harm, than men sometimes because. For instance, if a man enters a room full of women, or if you leave a man and a woman together, people are skeptical. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? No, 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 no. Let's know what's happening there. Why is that man alone with the woman? Okay. Everybody is already on guard already. Like once you just see a man approaching you in public or in a dark place, you're already, you're, your senses are already like going off. You're already on guard. You're already like anticipating evil. But when you see a woman, you are more calm. You've not heard that kidnappers use women to, to lure other women, okay? When you see a cab in the night, even though the cab is suspicious looking, even though there are like two suspicious looking men in the car, you saw a woman in front, you saw a woman at the back, and there are women in the car, let me enter as well. So at the end of the day, your guards are, are less down more when a woman is involved. So women are actually capable of even doing more harm if they are given that freedom, okay, if they are allowed to do it, okay, I heard of a story of a woman that beat her house up to death and threw the girl's body in the backyard or something inside bush, and I'm like, how does that even happen? How does that even happen? Okay, we talk about toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, masculinity, masculinity. We don't talk about toxic femininity. We don't talk about that one. We don't talk about how women can actually be very, 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 very hurtful and hateful. We don't talk about it, okay? So, because we don't talk about it, you will see that even people that are being victims of other women cannot even speak out. That is, how I, that is why when that guy said that thing about Igbo women being very wicked, a lot of people went to his DMs. They didn't come to his conversation to talk about it though. A lot of people went to his DMs because they didn't want to be seen as, you know, the ones that are perpetrating that, you know, idea. But they went to his DMs and they said what was happening to them or what happened to them in the past. Okay? Um, so as a woman, when you have people in your care, please do not maltreat them. If you know that you cannot take care of somebody's child, let the person go. Let the person go. I've heard people give the, uh, um, um, the you know, ex, no, is it, I won't call it an excuse though, but some people say things like, oh, a lot of times women cannot let those people go because, you know, is it that they came from the husbands and the, especially in Ebola land where the husband is the king of the home, right? And he brings his niece and his, or his nephew to come and live in the house. You cannot say no because it's, it's your husband's people. They're the owners of the house, you know, that kind of thing. So the only thing she can do is just maltreat them. For me, I still don't see that as an excuse, okay? If you cannot stand against your husband if you cannot stand up to your husband if you cannot tell him no you don't want you don't want this child in your house then you better treat that child well okay you better treat that child well because it is not the child's fault that the child is there it's not the child's fault so if you you you, you are powerless to, to your husband it's not when you see small children that you now have power you are a very evil person if you do that kind of thing, okay? Or you have house helps because many of these house helps come from poor homes. Many of these houses don't have really, you know relatives that really that really care about them. That's facts, facts. A lot of house helps don't have relatives that care about them. Come from poor homes, very poor backgrounds. Don't really have much going for them in life. So they come to your house and anything you give them, they accept it. You now use that opportunity, you know, because they are weak and they are powerless. You've seen, you've seen where you where you have power. That's now where you want to now start showing yourself. You now start, you know, meting out different kind of punishment on them, beating them, starving them, doing a lot of harmful and hateful things towards them. If you are doing that as a woman. It is not good, okay? I didn't say God will punish you, but let's not, let's not even start swearing for every push -up. But husband will maltreat wife, Ma wife will maltreat house help, house help will maltreat Oga's uh, son, Oga's son will maltreat uh, Oga's daughter, Oga's daughter will maltreat the baby, the baby will maltreat the, the mother. <laughs> like, it is a vicious cycle. It is a vicious cycle like that we need to stop. You need to stop it, okay? I did a video about, you know, how to get the best out of your house helps, and that video was actually well received. I got a lot of good comments and, you know, people really, you know, a lot of things I said in that video really resonated with, you know, a lot of you as well. I mean, people said that there are things they learned from that video and all of that, okay? The reason why I did that video, and I'm going to even do more videos like that, is so that we can change this narrative, okay? That you have a house up in your house, they are not slaves. 
they are not slaves they are employees the way you are an employee to your boss is the same way they are employees to you you cannot go and slap somebody because the person is your house help you go and slap the person because the person annoyed you imagine when you annoy your boss in the office and your boss slaps you how are you going to take it like make, make it make sense how are you going to take it or your boss does something to you in the office that or you do something to your boss in the office that he doesn't like or she doesn't like and then she starts insulting insulting your generation how will you take it you know so just because somebody's in your house and that's why i said don't even employ children that's why you can't even employ a child it is slavery it is child abuse okay so if you have a child in your house that you employed hmm, just know that they're practicing child abuse especially when in cases in fact there's many cases where they employ children in their house and they pay the money to their parents that is you or the person's parents so all of you all of you join together you people are just evil some of you carry cane self and flog house help hey god of mercy you will carry cane and be flogging house help. And these are not babies though. These are grown people, grown men and women in your house. You will carry cane and be flogging them because they, they, they annoyed you. They did not do their work. They stole from you. If they steal from you, take them to the police station. The same way if you see from your boss in the office, they will arrest you. Take them to the police station. If you don't take, them, if you don't take it up with the police, send them packing. Send them packing. It is not worth it. It doesn't even make sense. This is this is evil that we are, we are disguising as culture. We are disguising as uh, uh, I'm being disciplined. We are disguising evil as I don't tolerate nonsense. No, that is terrible. Anyway, if you're an Igbo woman and you see those things and you're offended by it, there's a high chance, there's a high possibility that you are actually guilty. Because me, when I saw it, I wasn't offended. Because now it does not apply to me. Okay, it does not apply to me. And whoever, whoever the shoe fits, you actually wear it. Okay. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Okay. Please and please and please, if you see this injustice happening anywhere, please report it to the police or report it to uh, is it NAPTIP or what they call them. Okay. If you see this injustice anywhere happening, please report it. Stop it. Talk to the person. Intervene. And if it's in your house, don't do it. And and even to the men out there, you know that your wife is an evil person she's maltreating her house help you now turn a blind eye i don't deal with women issues it's, it's now women issues but the person is in your house living in your house eating your food you know interacting with your children doing work for you cleaning your room cleaning your your in fact some of you even send them to wash cars for you you're sending house help to wash car for you you're sending house help to to carry your briefcase downstairs you're sending house help to arrange your room to clean this to wash that but when, in, when you now see that person being maltreated, you will now say, it's not my business, I don't, I don't add mouth in women's issues. God will judge you. God will judge you. That thing that you are looking for, it will come to you. The day that that child, that person is going to die, I pray they arrest you and your wife. In fact, they should put you in maximum security prison and put your wife in the minimum one, even though she's the one that caused the problem. They should, they should, they, you, should, you need to suffer more for it because it is even worse when good people see evil happening and turn a blind eye. It is even worse because a bad person is being a bad person. They are being who they are. But you... You know the right thing. You know what is good. You, you are, you are, but you, you are being a coward. You are turning your blind eye to it because uh, it's not my business. And then, ah, your, your case is, is a sorry case. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this topic. Let me hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Do you agree that Igbo women are wicked to their house help? Do you believe that it's an Igbo thing or it is a woman thing or it is a human thing or it is a person thing? I don't know. Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys